Hello, everyone. It is July 31st, 2019, and you are watching Unfound Live. Of course, I'm in here a few minutes early, and that's okay. I want to make sure that, as usual, um, everything is working as a usual. Uh, I should have mentioned this. I, I think this started actually a couple weeks ago that I'm now using a different program. You'll notice that Wirestream logo is not in the bottom corner anymore. I'm actually running this through Patreon now. And I think it's going to be smoother. We're not maybe going to have some of the issues and it's been choppy and everything, but it's free through Patreon. And I can use them to host the program. And of course, for all of you, you don't notice, of course, any difference. But on my end, it's a little bit easier. I don't have to use that program anymore. And that makes me very happy. I think that uh, it's easier. It's more reliable. So there you go. Um, I think I already have a question. You know, I didn't post uh, if anybody had any questions uh, tonight. Uh, a little busy today. But if anybody does have any questions that they would like me to answer, and I'll say this in a couple minutes as well, uh, you get those questions in. Of course, it can be about anything. doesn't have to be anything with any uh, missing persons cases. It can just be cult, you know, pop culture or whatever else. And I need to say some EB and little bit and Concha and Mark and Jean and Nana, um, Jasmine and Cherie wielding the wrench, Heather and um, uh, Cherie. Wirestream was such a headache. It was. And uh, what I did, Sheree, is I was able to combine what we do on Sunday nights for the um, think tank and then combined it with YouTube and it being free. And this is what you get because it's I think uh, our experience with the think tank on Sunday nights is the stream and everything is much more reliable. That's and I don't have to use Wirestream for that. So, Mandolin, what's going on? And I will start uh, here in about a minute, but it's great to see all of you in here. Susan, how are you? Good to see you. And um, everything's good here. Was busy today getting Friday's episode ready. Of course, we're going to talk about that tonight. And one did a little disc golfing. At least I got about nine baskets in before it started thundering and lightning and raining a little bit. But I got a little of that in today before I had to come home. And I was just talking to my dad before um, I came on the uh, air tonight. He's doing good. He's up there in Pennsylvania. Susan Christie and Katrina. Good to see everybody tonight. I don't know how many people we're going to have. We had, a, of course, a, a very good showing uh, last week. Uh, so it is nine o'clock. So let me officially begin the program. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in tonight. I cannot believe. You don't – I don't know. I, it's hard to believe how fast the past week went. I cannot believe that it was a week ago that I was standing in Amarillo, of course, starting this sh uh, show, of course, an hour central time, 8 o'clock. And uh, with all the listeners who were there and everybody who I got to meet, I know Heather's in here and Paula and Ava and, of course, Penny and her husband and her son. Uh, I met Nick and uh, a, a bunch of other people. It was so good uh, to meet all of them in person, you know, just talking with them uh, as much as one-on-one -on -one as I could. I just can't believe it was a week ago. It seems like yesterday. I just, it's crazy. It is absolutely crazy. Uh, Indy and Michelle and everybody, um, I love the golf hover. You love the disc, uh, disc golf, Nana? I'm talking about disc golf, not regular ball golf. Um, but you say you're really bad. Um, Nana, you're welcome regarding the uh, videos from Texas. I'm going to be talking about those a little bit. Uh, it's, yeah, Heather, uh, I know exactly what you mean. Uh, of course, I know what you mean. Um, hello, Paula and Anne. 
Katrina says, glad you made it home safe from the panhandle. Really, really appreciated you coming and posting your maps. Uh, it was great to be there, Katrina. It's a long drive. It's 22 hours back and forth, but I got it done. Didn't get any speeding tickets or anything. Um, and I'm very fortunate to have a car that's very reliable and gets very, very good gas mileage. And I just kind of put on the tunes and just drive. That's really how I handle it. Christine, uh, good to see you. Kim, Valerie, everyone, um, Shanna, uh, thank you for making it tonight. So it's, but it's good to be home. I really enjoyed being in Amarillo. Uh, it's uh, riding out, uh, driving over toward Canadian, of course, the next day on, on Thursday. It's really beautiful country. Uh, I love seeing like the windmill farms and I love seeing the oil uh, drilling, you know, going up and down and, and the cattle and the pickup trucks. And it's so flat out there. Uh, it's really uh, a beautiful part of the United States. Really saw some nice views uh, while I was out there. And, uh, you know, I'd been through Amarillo before just on 40 um, driving each way when I drove across the United States. But of course, getting on the other highways, um, really got to see a, a beautiful part of the country. And, um, however, I really do, I really do, um, enjoy the view though, that I have here in Florida too. Paula asks me, you don't listen to any podcasts when you drive. Uh, no, I don't Paula. Um, no, I don't. I, uh, I listen as Heather says, uh, the mega death. I do listen to some mega death Heather, but I, the only group that I listened to on my way to Amarillo and back was Iron Maiden. And I listened to all of their albums. That's the first time I've ever done that. Of course I had plenty of time to do that. So I did. Um, yeah, Paula, I don't listen to any other podcasts. Uh, I, I really don't want to get into that, uh, on, on tonight, but I don't, uh, I, I think that music, um, it kind of keeps me alert and keeps me awake. And once again, it was, I had the opportunity to listen to all of those albums, uh, all at the same time, one after the other. And I found some little morsels in the Iron Maiden catalog that I'd missed before songs that I was like, oh yeah, that's really good that now I've added to my greatest hits on, list on Spotify. So that's what I kind of did. Um, Shree says, just think, even though you were in Texas, you were still 12 hours away from my location in South Texas. I know Texas is huge. Shree, I understand. I, I know it's crazy. It, it's certainly crazy. But uh, it's, it's good to be back. And I'm going to talk about a little bit about, of course, being there, going to Canadian in a bit. Uh, we need to talk about the poll for the Lisa Wallace case from last Friday. Um, everyone, but I think Cherie, not to point her out, I think everyone, uh, but Cherie believes if you um, took part in the poll in the Unfound Podcast discussion group on Facebook, that everyone but Cherie, I think, believes that the roommate Amy knows what happened to Lisa. Now, I'm inclined to agree with that, and in fact, I wrote about that in the Patreon blog. Of course, the Patreon blog was late this week because of me driving and everything. I finally got it done on Monday, but this was the first time I got to do a blog after we'd already done the think tank. So I incorporated some of the think tankers' ideas and thoughts, feelings into the blog, which I thought was interest interesting. Um, I'm inclined to probably believe that Amy suspects what also happened to Lisa and that Chris did something to her, but, um, suspecting and knowing are two different things. And, um, I think that as I wrote about in the blog, there's maybe some reasons that she couldn't have known as well, but everybody, I think, but Cherie, I'm going to keep saying that, uh, believes that Amy knows what happened to Lisa and she's just kept her mouth shut uh, the whole time. Yes, we agree, but we also disagree. That's true, Cherie. Um, Blaze says, music makes me break speed limits. You know, Blaze, um, I'm a former drag racer. 
back in the day and everything. And there was a time when I was a, a very fast driver. But these days, I put it on cruise control just a couple miles per hour above the speed limit. And that's how I drive. I, I just I, I, I don't want the stress of going like 10 miles per hour over the speed limit and risking getting a ticket and things. I'll go a couple above and that's it. Um, Michelle says probably a little further from me and I am in Texas too. Texas, huge shape. Um, T Tiana says Amy knows. Yeah. Paula, I would cha change my vote after the think tank. I'm not sure if she knows. Well, Paula, you're full. I, I don't know if you could do that. You're perfectly, um, willing to think that that's interesting that maybe you changed your mind after the think tank. And if some of you are watching for the first time and um, wondering what we're talking about, what is this think tank? This is a very private group of unfound listeners that get together on Sunday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern. To be a part of the group, you must be a Patreon supporter at the $12 a month level to be in the group. So as you would expect, because of it being at that level, the group is very small, maybe eight or nine people. But we get to talk more one-on-one. -on -one. I get to talk more one-on-one -on -one with uh, the people who are in there. And all we do is talk about that case for that week. We don't talk about anything else. Unlike this show where it's a potpourri of things, um, on Sunday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern, very much like the way it is here, it's a, but it's a private feed. Um, we discuss the case that has just come out on Unfound, and we really try to get into the details and, you know, maybe try to come up with some more leads that the guests, you know, ideas that the guests can use to further, of course, move the case forward. So when you hear me talk about the think tank, and if you are new, um, to Unfound or watching on Wednesday nights, that's what the think tank is. And we would love to have you there. I think anybody, uh, I know Sheree's in there and Heather's in there, Paula's in there, Miranda's in there. Every, some of these people who are in here tonight, they, they will tell you that everybody's ideas and thoughts gets heard. We throw different ideas around. And um, I think it makes everyone feel like they're part of the process. And they are, you know, trying to really, uh, and I think it's, the only thing like it anywhere in the world. I, I think so. I'm pretty sure. Um, little Bit says she listens to audiobooks. I have nothing against that little bit. Hello, Miranda. What's going on? Uh, I'm one of those drivers, Tiana. I keep it above the speed limit. I mean, how fast am I supposed to go, Tiana? <laughs> um Chrissy says, just jumped on. Is this chat on a specific case or can we ask questions about other cases? Um, Chrissy, you can certainly ask questions, um, uh, but I don't take more than one or two from any particular person. So if you're going to ask some questions, pick a couple out and I will try to answer them to the best of my ability. Um, thank you for posting that, Cherie. Miranda says, the Think Tank is awesome. Too bad I missed it this past Sunday. That's fine, Miranda. Of course, you could still watch it, uh, being that it, you can access the private link through Patreon to see what we talked about this past Sunday. Jessica, uh, I'm so glad you got to see our town. It's a great town. It looks like it, Jessica. Hey, Emily. And there's Emily, uh, one of my assistants. What's going on, Emily? Um, hello. Hey, Oakley. Um Oakley, halo, Ed, and Unfound, great to be back. Well, great to have you, Oakley. And Heather says, I guess I love it, meaning the think tank. Yes, and uh, Heather, it was great meeting you uh, last week. So, um, yes, Chrissy, if you'd like, to, once again, anybody else, if you have a couple questions that you'd like me to answer, but um, Chrissy's asking me, was the cause of death ever answer, announced in the Thomas Brown case? No, it wasn't. No. Um, I'm not saying that nobody knows what it is, but it's never been announced. And I don't believe that even Penny herself knows what it is. Uh, Valerie, I'm happy to hear you say you don't think it was suicide because everything's screamed, but we'll get to all that. We're going to get to that in a bit. Let me get through some other things. Um, Kamisha Hollis. Uh, it's weird how that worked out. I did not know. I don't think that it was going to work out this, but we covered the case on unfound. And then a week and a half later, uh, no. Just days later, 
Um, Marvin Young was in court and um, I have not had a chance to talk to Caprice, who was her sister, who is her sister, who was the guest for that episode. I've not had a chance to talk to her. Uh, she tried contacting me last week when I was driving to Amarillo. And unfortunately, where I was, uh, the cell phone reception was going in and out. And I didn't want to get into our conversation. Then it drop out. So um, I believe Caprice and I are going to be talking to tom talk uh, talking tomorrow. And we're going to talk about a little bit about what went down. Uh, if I think that I'm able to pass along any additional information on top of what's already been made public at the hearing from last week, I will let you know. And of course, or I'll just tell Caprice that she can just post in the group to update all of you. Of course, it's up to her how much she wants to say and what she, whether she wants to do that or not. But um, there were certainly some things that came out of that hearing regarding Marvin Young last week. And it does seem that um, it does seem that uh, I think a lot of us were right, that if the prosecutor is going to tra is charging him with murder, that there must be more information than we covered in the episode. And that is true. Um, that what came out in the hearing was some additional information. Not only did they have Marvin Young on video throwing her purse into um, the trunk of her car, but he also had a plastic bag that he was carrying. And I, I'm guessing that when they finally did, if you'll remember, the police did find him walking on the street. He did not have that plastic bag with him when they found him. So that plastic bag, whatever was in it, got thrown away. I don't know if they ever did locate it. I have no idea. So it wasn't just uh, the purse that he had when he got out of her car. He had some sort of plastic bag that he, that he was carrying. That came out in the hearing. The other thing, uh, let me see here just to stop here for a second. Yes, Miranda, yes. You didn't know you could do that. Yes. If you go to Mar uh, Miranda, since you are uh, a Patreon supporter at the $12 a month level or higher, you can look, go down the posts, and you'll be able to go to that link and click on the link that's in Patreon. It's only available to certain people. If you click on the link, it'll take you to um, the think tank from this past Sunday. Yes. Yeah, you can do that. Absolutely. And, uh, and if you do, let, uh, if you any, have any problems with that, Miranda, let me know. Oakley, how was the Maiden concert? It was spectacular. Of course, it was just awesome. Uh, that's, it seems like yesterday, but that's going to be two weeks ago tomorrow, which is crazy. And it was me, myself and my buddy, Doug. I uh, hadn't seen him in a while. We hadn't hung out like that in years and years and years. We had a great time. Doug, uh, one of my best friends at forever. Um, just one of the nicest guys, great guys uh, you ever want to meet. Um, but getting back to Kamisha Hollis's case, the other thing that came out of the hearing was that not we if you'll re remember caprice and i talked about how she believed that they were doing some searching over in walnut iowa which is about over an hour away from omaha and the reason they were doing and the reason she found out about that there was a farmer they were looking around his land he found out what they were doing and then he actually called caprice to tell her well what was also found out is that someone's phone pinged in the Plattsmouth area, which is about a half hour north of Omaha. And there is a place called the Schilling Wildlife Refuge, something like that. And they were looking around and they are now currently still uh, looking around in that area to see if they can find anything re related to Kamisha's disappearance. What I think is interesting about this is the way I look at a map it does seem that Marvin would have had to have gone through Plattsmouth to get to Walnut, going there and coming back. So um, there's that. So those are a few new things that came out. Now, my understanding in talking with Caprice 
is that there's more information than that that hasn't come out. Once again, we're going to talk about it tomorrow, and then I'll figure out um, if she's going to release any more information to the public or whatever else. But those are some things that came out uh, in the uh, in the hearing, once again, last Tuesday. So the day, a week ago yesterday, the day before I was in Amarillo is when this happened. Like I said, Caprice that night uh, said, asked me if I had a chance to talk. And it was just, like I said, cell phone reception where I was with Spotty, and I just didn't want to fight it. So I, I believe we're going to be talking tomorrow. Takes a stand against the suicide idea, uh, suicide idea. I'm glad Ed's not scared. No, I'm not scared, Cherie. Thank you. Um, I, and once again, we're going to Tom's case. We're going to talk about it in a bit. A um, little bit uh, says, "Hey, Ed, did you see what I posted about the case in the case where the girls from Oklahoma were were two friends that you covered?" Yes, there's things going on. And they're doing some digging and searching around in Laura Bible and, and Ashley Freeman's case. Uh, maybe I want to talk about that uh, a little bit uh, as well. Um, <laughs> that's okay, man. Uh, Sheree, yes. Uh, Sheree, uh, if anybody doesn't know, uh, once again, if you're new to this, uh, to this Unfound Live show on Wednesday night, Sheree, if you're seeing her, in there, and she has the blue uh, with the wrench be uh, beside it. She is also one of my assistants. Emily is one of my assistants. Cherie is one of my assistants. And Emily, uh, Cherie, uh, one of her duties is to be kind of the moderator for the show on Wednesday night. So if anybody gets out of hand, she will uh, put you in timeout. That is one of her duties, and she's been doing it very well for a while now. But, yes, yeah, so she does uh, answer some of the questions regarding – uh, Patreon stuff and, and things like that as well if I don't get to them. So that's why she's in blue and the rest of you are all in a kind of gray. Um, yeah, the Ashley Freeman case, yes, uh, a little bit. You're right. I did see uh, that. And let me just fill, uh, finish up the Kamisha Hollis uh, points first. Um, what was surprising to me, something that else that came out, and uh, once again, this is public information. I'm not revealing anything that Caprice has told me that I'm not supposed to talk about. But one of the news reports that I saw, it says that Kamisha was actually seeing somebody else. She had started, I guess, going out on dates with some other guy and meeting some other guy. That was not something that uh, Caprice and I ever talked about. I don't even know if I even ever asked her about it. Um, but that is in one of the reports that I saw. So once I, I think what I'm saying is that's just one more thing that would seem to probably motivate uh, Marvin to possibly kill her. Um, I think that's very easy to think. But uh, that was certainly news to me. It was certainly it was news to me that there was a plastic bag uh, that was that Marvin had. It was news to me that the phone pinged in Platt's mouth. And it was news to me that Kamisha had started seeing another man. Those, that's all new information to me. That was not information that we withheld during the interview. Um, Caprice never brought it up, and I didn't know about it. So I thought that those were support uh, points that uh, I should mention regarding the case. Uh, and like I said, I think that this does show that um, – the prosecutors had more information. If you'll go back to my summary, I even said, if that's all they had, what Caprice and I talked about, then I was a little worried. Now it seems they do have a bit more, if not a lot more, and it's starting to make me feel much better about a successful prosecution. So there you go. Um, let me um, get to... Um, uh, I, I, I'm going to cover that in a bit, Chrissy. Um, uh, let me see. Okay, Alan and Carrie. There's Carrie. Hello, Carrie. And if anybody wants to know who Heather, Carrie is, you're seeing her, and then you see um, Heather in here too. They are two of the administrators for the Facebook, uh, the discussion group. And so they keep an eye on things. 
And once again, if you get out of line in there, they will um, kick you out. So Carrie and Heather are Heather, very new administrator for the group. Carrie's been an administrator for a few months now. And of course, I have administration powers. And a guy named Jeremiah also has uh, administrative powers as, to, as well. But uh, I think that it's Carrie, uh, mostly recently now with Heather, who are just keeping an eye on things in the discussion group. So that introduces you to some of the people that make things happen um, or unfound. I do not do everything. And I'm more than happy to give credit to all these other people who do these things because um, they deserve it. Um, the update episode, as I stated, um, there had been a, when I did an update episode back in April, uh, the suggestion was made that I do one every approximately four months. So the next update episode, I don't know how many cases are going to be in it right at the second, but the next update episode is going to be, I believe the first, uh, first Friday in September. And then the next Friday, I don't even know what those dates are. I think that would be September 6th is going to be the update episode. And then September 13th, which is Friday the 13th, um, is going to be the, th I'm going to play the third anniversary episode of Unfound. Because that's, that's about when the anniversary is from when the first episode ever came out. So you can be planning for that. Update episode, September 6th, third year anniversary. It'll be out three years the podcast um september 13th so be looking for that so we're still a, a ways from that but i just wanted to talk about that um transcribers you can be start looking although i have not shipped them yet um transcribers who worked on for example volumes five and six i'm going to be able to start shipping out your hard copies of your books that you've earned finally and so be looking for those. Uh, so if you were a transcriber for volume five, if you were a transcriber for volume six of season one, they will be coming. And it will be all of season one's books. And you know who you are out there. And tomorrow I have to, you'll be, um, uh, I know where Cherie's going with that. Um, I know where you're going, Cherie. Uh, and tomorrow I'm going to be working on the newsletter. So be looking for that later in the day. Um, cause as you know, now the newsletters come out for, uh, unfound at the beginning of the month. And I have a lot to write about and it's going to take me a lot of time. In fact, I'll probably start tonight. And, um, so be looking for that. Uh, be probably talking about Kamisha Hollis's case and any other things that pop into my mind. Of course, I'll be talking a little bit about Amarillo and Canadian and everything. Uh, so be looking for the newsletter probably later tomorrow, if not tomorrow night, because I just haven't gotten to start on it yet. So those are all the things that I needed, uh, wanted to talk about. Um, let's go back up here. Let's see if I can answer um it was chrissy's question i know um chrissy says why weren't specimens taken of the spot where someone urinated next to thomas brown's vehicle uh first of all chrissy i don't know if they did or not i have no idea and also um i do not believe i'm no scientist but I don't believe that you can tell. I don't believe you, there's DNA or, any, or anything in urine. So I don't know if they would have been able to take a specimen and identify whose it was anyway. So, um, but maybe there is a scientist out there. They'll say, yes, yes, yes. They could have done that. That I'm wrong. And that's fine. I can live with it. But I don't know if. Uh, there was, I don't know if it, there wasn't a specimen taken or not. So I really, uh, I really don't know how to comment on that per se. Um, see, here we go. Yes. My birthday is tomorrow. Yes. I wasn't going to say anything. You'll notice it's July 31st. I didn't say anything, but, uh, yes. Um, tomorrow is my birthday. 
And I don't I let's not make a big deal of it because we got stuff to do in here. But um, yes, I'm going to be 49 tomorrow. I was born August 1st, 1970. And if you're interested of some other people who've had who have or have had the same birthday as me, Joe Elliott, lead singer from Def Leppard, has the same birthday as I do. Um, Dom DeLuise, now deceased comedian. Uh, he had the same birthday as I do. And then if you've ever heard of the actress Fan Frances Farmer, Fanny Farmer, Franny Farmer, she died on the same day that I was born, August 1st, 1970. And I can also tell you that uh, the number one song in the United States when I was born was the Simon and Garfunkel hit Bridge Over Troubled Water. So there you go. But yes, tomorrow is my birthday. Uh, I, I would say that I have one of the coolest birthdays around. It's August. August just is August is such a great word. And then, you know, first being number one, and then it's in the it kind of breaks the summer up a little bit. You know, you have like Memorial Day, then Independence Day, and now my birthday, and then you have Labor Day. They're, they're all like equally spaced out. It's pretty cool. In fact, I would say the, my birthday is probably the coolest thing about me, really. So there you go. Uh, but thank you um, to um, – all right, Alan, you take it easy. I, I'm sorry to hear about your mother, but um, thank you for tuning in tonight. Thank you. Uh, ironic song, Bridge Over Troubled Water. You can look that up. It's Jerry Garcia's birthday, too. That's right. I knew that mandolin. That's right. Um, the Jerry Garcia was also born on August 1st. Uh, yeah, th well, thank you, Vera Valerie. Thank you for reading the newsletter. Chrissy says, okay, gotcha. I wasn't sure about that either. Thanks for answering, though. Chrissy, um, it very well may be that somebody collected a specimen. Uh, that would be news to me, though. And once again, uh, some of you science majors uh, can check and see if you somebody can be identified by their um, urine. Uh, I, I have no idea. A um, little bit, did I read the post from EB? Yes, I did. Um, and let's just uh, get right into that, being that that was, uh, if EB is still in here. Uh, this was, if anybody's just getting tuned in now, EB posted this when he or she was the first person to get in uh, here tonight, so I'm going to read it. I know everyone is wondering the same things. When Tom Brown was talking to the police on the roadside, does anyone know what was said? Then why were they talking, taking photos up close of him at the gas station? And why was two cops in Tom's vehicle all on one road? Uh, let me just state for the record, there is no proof as of yet that I know of that Tom talked to the police on the roadside that night. I've never said that. I know that somebody in particular has been saying that I have proof that the police did something to Tom. I've never said that. What I've said is I have proof they were practically right next to Franks when he was getting gas that night. And I found it odd that, that neither Sheriff Lewis or any of the deputies have ever said that in any interview, even though I know it's true. And they know it's true. They have to know it's true. They've never said that, and that seems odd to me. But never have I said that Tom, Tom talked to any police officers, deputies, sheriffs, anybody, Secret Service. I have never said that. So, EB, if you're still watching, um, that's just – that is not uh, factual. It's an opinion. I think it's a decent opinion, but there's no – fact to support that. So I, I so I, I would not type it as if it is true. It's it may be true and it may be not true. So um so if we don't know if they, they talked or not, then we can't talk about what was said. Um then why were they taking now as far as the next part, why were they taking photos close up of him at the gas station? Well this is this is still a point of contention, EB, and for everybody else. Uh, Penny claims that she was shown a picture of Tom pumping gas that night. And we put a picture in the discussion group on the Facebook page of me standing there, 
her taking a picture with my phone, her us recreating what she says the photo looked like. Um, we don't know who took that picture. And the truth is, ever since she was shown that picture, nobody's seen that picture. In fact, I think Sheriff Lewis and others now deny that the, the photo even exists. I don't know. So it might have come from uh, you know, a dash cam. Might have come from somebody's phone. Might have come from here. Might have come from there. Um, I know what most people are thinking, but there's no proof of that. All I am doing is I'm believing what Penny said. And she's saying that she saw a photo and I, with Tom pumping gas that night, and I believe her. Um, but there's no proof that any police officer, deputy sheriff, FBI, Secret Service, anybody else took that picture. Okay. So, um, and as far as why were two cops in Tom's vehicle on one road? Well, uh, EB, it's a free country. I mean, if you really just want to get to the generalities of it, uh, they're, they're riding around Hemp Hill County because they are the, they are the, the uh, law there and Tom's out getting gas that night. So that's why they're all, they were out on the roads. Um, but I, I keep coming back to, um, it would be clear to me that whoever was in those, um, Hemp Hill County Sheriff's office vehicles that night would have quickly realized that once they heard about Tom and how he'd been getting gas at Frank's that they would have been able to say, Oh, at that's really that time last night. Well, you know what? We drove by there very close to that time, and we don't, we didn't see him, or we did see him, but they've never said anything like that ever. Seems strange to me. So, EB, I hope that straightens that all out. And thank you for all the happy birthday wishes. Um, thank you. Um, uh, I feel great. Uh, gonna be 49 tomorrow. I feel spectacular. Just went and had the doctor looked at me, what, three weeks ago or something, and says I'm in great shape. I got a couple moles cut off on this left side of my body, and I don't think they're anything, and they're healing quite nicely. Um, Carrie says my je stepdad's name is Jerry Garcia, not the Jerry Garcia. Okay. That's funny, Carrie. Uh your little bit, your five-year-old says happy birthday. Well, little bit's five-year-old. Thank you. Um, um, little bit, um, little bit is slang. I'm guessing she's maybe copying this from somewhere. Can they get DNA from urine? Urine is not considered an idle source of DNA due to the low concentration of nucleated cells present in human urine. The nucleated cells found in urine are typically white blood cells and epithelial cells. There are large differences between the amount of epithelial cells present in male and female urine. Thank you for getting that a little, little bit. Thank you. Um, Chrissy, uh, you're very welcome, Chrissy. Um, th and thank you for tuning in tonight. I haven't seen your name in here before. Uh, so thank you for tuning in and asking those good questions. Uh, thank you, Jessica. Thank you to everyone ha wishing me happy birthday. I knew that if it got out, it was going to be a, a parade of happy birthdays. And I thank all of you. I really do. Uh, I, uh, Katrina asks, one thing, Ed, do you think the gas was used in Tom's vehicle was just someone driving around in it at Lake Marvin or could Tom be driving it until something happened to him? Uh, let's get to that. Let's talk about, uh, my trip. You know, I know that I've done the pictures. I know that, um, of course, I did the maps, uh, the video. It's like ended up being in two parts for some reason. I actually did it once and didn't like it and then reshot it. Um, first of all, I need to once again thank Charmin for organizing the meetup. And if you want to know, there's going to be another meetup in Houston, August 24th. Cherie is going to be organizing it. I hope people will show up and I'm just going to be, um, I would not expect me to surprise anybody this time. I have some things going on uh, at the end of August uh, right now that uh, I'm of course going to have some responsibilities toward the end of August 
that I don't believe I'll be able to drive to Houston. Uh, just going to be honest with you. But I do hope that uh, many people will show up for the Houston meetup and talk about what, what's ever going on with Unfound. Uh, but I need to thank Charmin for putting everything together. I don't know if she's watching or not, but um, she did such a fantastic job. She's such a great person, very personable, very energetic. Um, I, I, you know, she picked a great place. It was a private room. The food was great. The media was there. I mean, and that's all her. That's all her. That I had nothing to do with it. So once again, if you see Charmin in the group, please thank her and tell her, you know, what a great job she did. And of course, with Emily, of course, uh, 10 days before that or whatever it was, she organized one, Cherie. And um, I think that they're all, you know, doing a fine job. The, the one that I showed up to, very impressed. It was great spending time with the listeners. Uh, I think there were maybe six or seven tables there, people, round tables sitting in each one. I just spent some time going up and talking to each table. And it was great. To, uh, unfortunately, I don't remember everybody's name, but just to be able to look the listeners in the eye, talk to them. We talked a little bit about Tom's case. We talked about a whole bunch of different things. Um, Kim, uh, if you need information, Cherie is the organizer and she's watching right now. And hopefully she'll see that. Um, but um, it was just great getting, you know, this is my first chance to, this was my first chance to really sit down and, uh, with some listeners and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, you know, I, I, um, you know, I, uh, I spent a lot of time at home by myself. I'm not much of a public person. I feel very comfortable at home doing my work and I feel much more usually comfortable one-on-one -on -one than in large groups and everything. But I want you to know that I felt very comfortable there. It was a very relaxed atmosphere. Everybody was so nice, uh, you know, just unbelievable. And just sit down with some people, talk. And I think, uh, and I think they were very surprised that I was there. I think we kept the su uh, surprise uh, quiet as possible. Penny knew I was going to be there. Um, Sharman knew I was going to be there, but nobody else did. And... Um, you know, you don't know the kind of chills that I personally get when I'm talking to somebody right there and they're telling me, you know, we listen to you every week. We listen to your cases. We, you know, we read about the cases and go find more information after the episode. Uh, I met a family of three there who told me when they go on trips that they listen to the episodes and they're slowly catching up. They've they just found out about Unfound within the last few months. They're slowly catching up and they're listening to them one-on-one -on -one when they're driving around. It's just, I just can't even begin to tell you um, how that makes me feel. I, I just, it's just, there are no words, I think, in any language that uh, can express that. And I hope that uh, in all those listeners who got to meet me, that they, that how much they understand how much it means to me and how much it means to the guests that these people listen and, and take an interest. I, I hope that I got that across to every one of the people uh, that I met last Wednesday. I, I hope they tr truly, once they met me and we talked, how thankful I am and how thankful the guests are uh, that they, you know, that they're listening to Unfound and tuning in every Friday. I just, I really cannot state it enough. I, I hope they feel that way because. I certainly feel that way. Um, and like I said in my notes here, I'm looking over to my notes. It is crazy. It's just, um, it's just a little, you know, overwhelming uh, to know that, you know, people are being affected. People are talking and, and everything else uh, about these cases. Um, like I said, I just wish that I could remember everybody's name. Uh, but as far as going to Canadian, um, you know, um, let me just go through some statements here before I continue. Um, I'll answer that in a bit, Katrina. Thank you. Um, 
usually working when you have a live chat. Okay, Chrissy, thank you. Um, Chrissy says you're in Houston. Well, Chrissy, if you're in Houston, Cherie is going to be hosting um, the, the, the meetup. So talk to her about Kim. Talk to Cherie. Chrissy, talk to Cherie. Um, and Heather says, I honestly didn't do anything for the Amarillo meetup. But you showed up, Heather, and it was spectacular. I love meeting you and your daughter and her jeans, uh, blue jeans, that is. Um, Suzanne, do I believe Tom drove to the spot where the Durango was found? No, I don't. Um, Shree says, we really do spend a lot of time for these episodes. So much heart and effort to go into each week. So many people give their time to make things happen. That is true, Shree. Uh, Christy, loved meeting you last week. Thank you for keeping... Uh, Christy, and thank you for coming to the meetup. Thank you. I, I know you didn't know I was going to be there. So anybody that showed up to that meetup showed up because of Charmin, Charmin because of Penny. They didn't show up because they knew they were going to meet me. And that's what um, makes me the happiest, that these people showed up for them. They didn't show up for me. They showed up for them. And I, and I, and I love that. Um, Katrina listens at work. Thank you. Uh, Michelle, it's priceless. We are extremely thankful for the listeners. Thank you, Michelle. Um, and thank you, Cherie. Uh, you know, in going to um, Canadian, it's a beautiful town. It really is. It's a beautiful uh, part of the United States. It's a you know, tiny little town. In some ways, it reminds me of my hometown of Leechburg, although my town of Leechburg isn't as isolated kind of as Canadian is. But it's about the same population, 2,500 people. Um, I was talking to Penny and her son Tucker about the size of the high school class. When he graduated, it was like 70 kids in the high school graduating class. That I graduated in a class of 71 kids from Leechburg High School in 1989. And you go there, and you know that probably the the thing that strikes me as the most is that you go there and you would never think that a young man could be murdered there. It reminds me, and in fact, I was thinking about this. It reminds me a lot about like Girdwood, Alaska, where Aaron Gilbert disappeared. I've never been there, but it looks beautiful. It's a resort area. It's the last and. That's why that episode, Aaron Gilbert's episode, is called The Last Place, because Girdwood is the last place you think uh, anyone would disappear, but Aaron Gilbert did. Same way with Tom and Canadian. You go through that town. It has such – if you didn't know you were in Texas, you'd still know you were in Texas. And it's, it's just a beautiful town, and you hate knowing that a young man was murdered there and that his murder is unsolved and all the other stuff that's gone along with it. It's just, I'm just going to say it. It's a damn shame. It's just beautiful. And, um, you know, I, uh, I enjoyed going there and I, um, uh, I thought it was important given that, uh, the Thomas Brown case has certainly raised the profile of the program which in turn has raised the profile of all the other cases that Unfound has covered. Um, I felt it a duty to, to, of course, go to Amarillo and then go to Canadian, spend time with Penny and her husband and, and her son Tucker, um, of course, Tom's older brother, and just talk to them right around and go to the different locations and um, make sure that – the people in that area who support Penny and her family know that I am behind them 100%. This isn't some type of publicity stunt for me. Nope. Nope. In fact, Charmin even asked me before I went to the meetup, do you want the media to be there? And I said, Charmin, that's up to you. I didn't say, Charmin, get the media. So we, that was up to her. I would have been happy to show up, no TV cameras, anything there, fine by me. Now, of course, they were there. But um, I'm not in this for the publicity. But 
the fact is, is that the people in that area of Texas have given unfound a lot, a lot. And I felt that I needed to go there to tell them that I appreciate it and to tell them that uh, myself, Cherie, Emily, Heather, Carrie, uh, Dr. Eric Grabowski, these people who have anything to do with anything that Unfound does, that we're not going to forget, um, you know, Tom Brown, and we're not going to forget the people who um, have given Unfound all this attention and once again has raised the profile of all of the cases that Unfound has covered. Okay. Uh, I think it's one of those things things where rising water raises all ships. And this isn't just about Tom Brown's disappearance and now murder. It's now the attention that all of these other cases are getting, ones that aren't in Texas, ones that we aren't sure if they're a murder or not, ones where we don't know think that there's corruption or not, ones that aren't just two or three years ago, but 20 years ago. All of them now are more visible because uh, a bunch of people have taken interest in Tom's case and thus into Unfound. We cover the case and everybody's like, what's this program? And uh, it's just amazing. It's, I, I have to tell you, it's not something that I really ever thought I would ever be a part of, ever. And I know I play a major part in it, but um, it's not something that I ever thought that I would be connected to. And that's why I think that I'm so thankful. And that's why I drove 22 hours, you know, and sleeping in my car and everything that um, to show my appreciation and to show that this isn't just something for publicity. This is serious. And I, and, you know, and, and we all take it very seriously. So um, there's that. There's that. Um, I just need to read some of the questions uh, here. Uh, Chrissy asked me, did you ever see the news report about Deputy Lewis, an arrest he made on a guy by the last name Cargill? Um, if that is the one in which there was a police chase, a car chase and everything, I have read about it. If it's something else, then no, I'm not. Don't think I'm familiar with it, Chrissy. Um... Jessica asked, in the photo she saw, was he looking toward the camera? No, he was pumping gas. Maybe I should have recreated it a little bit better, Jessica. But no, he was pumping gas. He was, he was pumping gas. Thank you, Stacy. Um, yes, uh, Kim, uh, if you aren't in the discussion group on Facebook, if you're on Facebook, um, get into the discussion group. You'll um, you can find that out. Nina says, Yes, take it. I could be. It was he was standing aside, but we were just trying to recreate. We're just trying to figure out how, you know, it wasn't what I was trying to do is we were trying to figure out with that picture um, how far the camera would have been away from Thomas to take the for that picture to look like it does. And we were trying to figure out would it have been um, a vehicle that Thomas or a person or something that Thomas would have noticed. And I think the conclusion was that, yes, absolutely. Whoever took that picture, Thomas definitely saw who was taking that picture. That's what we were trying to uh, determine. Um, Nina says, it's so sad that despite his family concluding that he was missing so fast, it hasn't helped the case at all. That's true. Um, yes, Kim, hook up with Cherie. And she'll give you all the information um, that you need. Yes. Shri says, there were others that wanted publicity moments that Ed actually turned down, so no, it wasn't publicity. That is true. That is true. I've actually turned down uh, media opportunities for myself uh, to talk about Thomas's case. Uh, what I usually say is, you know where to find Penny, go talk to her. That's what I've done. Um, 
Bree says, has anybody confirmed that Thomas's death certificate says homicide? Um, I don't know about that, Bree. Um, Katrina says, I know you wish you could visit sites, all the sites you cover, but we truly appreciate you doing this. Katrina, I do too. I do too. And uh, maybe that's something that I should think a little harder about. I'm just going to, I'm just going to leave it at that. I, I, you know, you have to remember I am a single guy. I don't have any children or anything like that. I do have mobility. So I'm not going to deny that once in a while it does pop in my head. Could I do a tour of like the United States, something? I, I'll admit that I've thought about it, Katrina. I just haven't figured out a way to make it all work yet. Um, Yes, Michelle uh, is saying that August 3rd will be 13 years since Brandy Wells went missing, and, um, and we will stand with you. So appreciate she hasn't been forgotten. No, Michelle, um, I see Brandy's picture every day when I go through my pictures uh, on my computer. I see all of the cases, the, the pictures of the missing people that Unfound is covered every day, every day. And Brandy, of course, then is always on my mind. And the weird thing is I drove by right where her car was found because I went through Longview, Texas, both ways, and I was on I-20, and that's where her car was found. I went right by the spot where her car was found. It did. In fact, uh, I, Emily and I have talked about that. Um, Christy says, I was, I've driven on Marvin road for several times. I was surprised where the phone was found. And, and I tend to believe Thomas's Brown was not Thomas's body was not in the spot that whole time. Any thoughts? Uh, I was also surprised where the phone was found. Christy, I don't think I was surprised where the backpack was found, but yes, I was a little surprised where the phone was found. And as far as Thomas's body being moved, I have no idea. That sounds like a lot of work to me, putting it one place, then moving it. Um, there's no proof of that. Uh, given that we went over into the general area where his body was found, his remains were found, I'm more inclined to believe that his body was there the whole time. But that's just me. Um Forever under construction, I-20. Uh, Kara, you know, I don't remember uh, I-20 being that bad. I didn't really run into too much construction going there or back. However, there was construction that was going on right outside my hotel where I stayed. So there's that. Uh, I-40 is uh, had some construction on it too, but I don't remember any on I-20. Uh, maybe from people who are close to the some areas we cover can send photos to the Facebook group. Well, I would love that, Blaze. Um, okay, so you made a group for Tammy McKittrick. That's good, and we will be talking about that before uh, the show is over, and uh, it's already 55 minutes. Wow, okay. Um, just a few more things about Thomas's case. Uh, some of you got to see the Durango video that I took, and then I took it down. It had only been up for not even a day, and it already had 4,300 views, which is crazy. Um, I had to take it down. Uh, the reason I did so is because, in retrospect, I probably should have arranged something a little different to film it. Uh, filming it inside the garage where there were other things there, bad idea. Did not even occur to me at the time, um, but in retrospect, it was a bad idea. And so um, there was a concern. People, you know, if the video is getting seen a lot, who knows who's going to see it? They might see something in the garage they might like to steal. So I took the video down. So anybody that didn't get to see it, I apologize. Um, it was about five, five minutes long, six minutes long. I just walked around the, the Durango talking to Penny about various things regarding the Durango. Um, I apologize, but it will not be posted publicly again. 
Uh, so if you're wondering um, about that, then that's what happened. Um, Sheriff Lewis was not in town while I was there. Uh, from what I understand, he was out. He was in Lubbock, I think. He went to an um, a conference where I guess police officers learn about arson. That's where I believe he was, and he had been out uh, a few days uh, before I got there, and uh, so he was not there when I was there. However, we did drive by the uh, sheriff's office, as you would expect, and I did get a picture taken out in. Front, but I'm not going to post it. Um, you should also know that there was another picture that I took and a video that I did that uh, also will not be made public. I did them for my own um, personal uh, information, and it had to do with the signs that were vandalized. I was not aware of something until Penny told me it. And she told me it right before I was going to do the video. And so I made that video, that, that topic, um, the reason the video was made. And it's probably a little too, infl it's all factual, probably a little too inflammatory. So I'm just going to keep that private for now. Um, but there was a picture in a video that I did that will be not be made uh, public while I was there for uh, a few different reasons. Um, Suzanne, I'm not sure about what remains were found. Um, Carrie says, I did a video of where Angie... Yes, right. That was spectacular, Carrie. That was really, really good. Um, where Carrie did a video of where Angie Yarnell disappeared from. Uh, that was really good. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, Chrissy, how do I choose cases? It's probably a little too late to get into that this week, Chrissy, but I've covered that topic before. I... I suggest you go back and listen to the Q&A episode that I did back in April. You will find, that I think, that question answered in there. Um, Michelle says, I was thinking about that too, Blaze. I would buy an RV soon and plan on some travel. We could be sluice for Ed. Well, I love the sound of that, Michelle. Um, okay. So is there anything else uh, regarding my trip? It was it was good to be there and really see, uh, really gave me a new perspective. Mainly the, the main thing is I didn't realize how close the Durango was to town, uh, you know, where it was found, how close it was found to town. That was probably the most startling thing of everything that uh, we went, we did on that Thursday, last Thursday, cruising around Canadian to walk up the little dirt trail and see where the Durango was and know that town, the paved road was right over the little grass area there, about 500 feet away. That was probably the most surprising thing to me. I, I had the impression that it was on the, the, like the more Northeast side of the water treatment plant, which it wasn't. Um, before I get into this Friday's case, so that's everything I really have to say about Thomas Brown and everything uh, for uh, tonight. Uh, it's I think until the case is uh, solved and maybe even well after that, it's always going to be a topic of conversation. But um, I'm just going to leave it at that for tonight. Uh, as Little Bit pointed out, there's things going on in Laura Bible and Ashley Freeman's case. They've started doing some digging. I'm uh, uh, in the area. I don't know what they're going to find. You know, my personal opinion is that unless this guy that they have in custody has actually finally given up the location, of course, he claims he has no idea. Um, unless they actually know, uh, then you know, they have a really decent idea. The odds of just going out and you know, on some room or something, the odds of finding their remains are very, very small. Very, very small. Um, you know, in we've covered over 130 cases now for unfound. And the remains have only been found in two of them. Two. Thomas Brown and Zoe Campos. 
with it. So, and that's unfortunate. It sucks. So, um, the odds of the remains just being found randomly, very, very low after 20 years. But we, I mean, maybe this time last year or longer than that ago, uh, we didn't think that case might ever get solved. At least they have somebody in custody now. So things can change. I'm saying the odds are not good unless where they are, where they're looking and everything is, you know, new, reliable information. And it does seem that just a few months ago, um, or maybe I'm thinking of something else, but I just, uh, you know, it could be the, remember, you have to remember something. That case was just covered nationally. You just don't know the kind of um, people that will come out of the woodwork things. And we get, and if we're unfound, we get it ourselves. That you just know, don't know what kind of people are going to come out in the woodwork. And they can sometimes make stories sound very real when all they're doing is lying. So it may be that they are following some lead or some tip they got after the TV show played nationally. It was covered. I don't know. I'm hoping it's successful. The odds are, though, that um, the odds aren't good. But once again, I don't know what the people who are digging know. So, but I know I know that uh, somebody linked, and there was a newscast and everything about it. And I've not talked to Lorraine Bible. I've not talked to her for a long time. I would love to talk to her again. Um, so I don't know, you know, what her opinion is on it at all. Um, let's see. Uh, you're right about the caliber of the gun. It's not a popular gun, Chrissy. Um, uh, Katrina says, your thoughts, please, on the gas use. Sorry to keep asking, but um, Katrina, uh, what I believe, I have no proof of this. What I personally believe is that Thomas's vehicle was driven out of town and it was left idling or driven around or something like that. And then when the person who was driving his vehicle thought the coast was clear, they drove back into town and parked it where it was found. Now, how much of that out of town was it just sitting there idling and it driving around? I have no, I don't know how I would ever know that, but um, it does, it, as I remember it, a quarter of a tank, you know, um, a Durango being driven would go through a, a quarter of a tank pretty fast. Being that a quarter of a tank lasted, it seems six or seven hours. It makes sense to me that the vehicle was parked somewhere, either shut off or idling for at least a part of that time. That's really Katrina. Uh, that's really all I got for you on that. Uh, I don't know if I really know if anything can be deduced from the, the gas used or not. I don't know. Um, yes. So let's talk about this Friday's case. Uh, this Friday's case will be the third week in a row where we are talking about uh, the possibility of a man in a woman's life might have caused her to disappear. Of course, Marvin Young and Kamisha Hollis were not married, but they had three kids together. He is the best suspect. Of course, he is in custody and has been charged with murder. Last week, we had Chris Wallace, Lisa Wallace, his husband, who was a suspect, never charged with anything. And then earlier this year, he was part of a murder-suicide. This week, we are talking about Tammy McKittrick. Now, if her name is not familiar to you at all, that doesn't surprise me because she's not on NamUs. She's not on Charlie Project, but Emily, and I know she's in here, um, she finds these cases, and she's so good at it, and this is a disappearance that occurred on November 15th, 2001, so only a couple months after September 11th. It happened in Bowling Green, Indiana, not Bowling Green, Kentucky, which I think a lot of people are going to think of because that's where the Corvette uh, museum is. That's where the Corvette was born, the Chevy Corvette. This is Bowling Green, Indiana. And the title of this episode is A Likely Story. 
And the reason it's titled that is um, because, well, it's a, it's a story many men and their position are likely to tell. We hear this story a lot. I don't know, you know, my what up and my wife was gone. I was doing work in the backyard. She went out and got in a car and I've never seen her again. It's a very likely story that husbands tell in disappearances. Of course, on the other hand, all of us know when we say the, the, the statement, a likely story, we're saying it sarcastically. Oh, likely story. You know, when your son comes home and he's past his curfew and he gives you some story and then what do you say to him? Yeah, likely story. That's why this episode is being called a likely story. Um, the guest for this episode is Tammy's daughter, Marae Ledgerwood, who uh, is in the group. And if you even maybe noticed today on Facebook that I sent out a request that I'm hoping that somebody or some people can help Marae get a Facebook page started for her mother's disappearance, along with helping her with NamUs. She's been in contact with NamUs, but they've been kind of blowing her off a little bit and not getting back to her. So uh, anybody who has experience in that area, please find her in the Facebook discussion group uh, and um, offer your um, help. Uh, Chrissy, uh, thanks for tuning in tonight. That's fine. Uh, Carrie says regarding the Durango, how many miles on it that day? Probably no way to tell. That's true. Uh, Emily says she found Tammy's case by her daughter posting about her mom missing. Emily, you're the best. Um, um, EB says she's a Kentucky woman. Okay. That's interesting. Um, uh, Katrina, thanks. Uh, thanks me for my thoughts. Um, thank you. And thank you for the nice wishes wishes. So the story that you're going to hear that Maria is going to tell is that her dad was a little bit of an interesting guy. Um, his original last name was Black, so he was Robert Black. And then he changed his last name for seemingly no reason to Mahan, M-A-H-A-N, and then he changed it again to McKittrick. We don't know why. Now, you're going to hear that he might have had some mob connections back in the day. Um, he was quite a bit older than Tammy. Tammy was like 40 years old when she disappeared. He was into his 60s. And even uh, his obituary did not list any other family members other than his children. Not like, you know, usually see in an obituary like his parents preceded him in his death. He has a sister. He has a brother. His obituary had none of that. But... Um, he says that, uh, he was out and when he came home that he was supposed to take Tammy to a doctor's appointment. He went out when he came back, she was gone. And that's the story. But you're going to hear some other, um, uh, things from Murray, as you always do with interviews with unfound that are going to perk your ears. Uh, you know, what I would say about Tammy's case is that maybe is not quite as clear cut in Kamisha's case or in Lisa's case. But um, I'm just going to be interested to see what you think uh, about uh, Robert um, McKittrick. Because the other part is that by all accounts, he was like the nicest guy in the world. Great dad. Everybody got along with him. But his wife disappeared. So there's that. Um, um, <laughs> Sheree says, that's what I do. Rambly changed my last name. That's funny, Sheree. Um, okay, Carrie, Emily, I'm glad you're going to, I maybe sounds like you're already helping Murray a bit. Uh, uh, Carrie sounds like an odd duck. Well, um, yeah. So that'll be this Friday's case. Uh, less than two days from now, Tammy McKittrick, a case that's never been covered anywhere ever. Not on NamUs, not on the Charlie Project, but Emily found uh, somebody to talk to, and I'm so excited to have Murray. Yes, Murray, that's her name. 
M-A-R-R-A-E, as the guest, uh, Tammy's daughter, who is in her late 20s now and very much wants to try to figure out uh, what happened uh, to her mother. She was very close with her dad. In fact, she will say that she was her dad's favorite child, uh, but she, of course, is still suspicious of him. And she's so I think she's taking a very objective look at everything. So what we do um, tonight? Uh, it's good to be home. Talked about the Lisa Wallace poll. We talked about updates on Kamisha Hollis. We talked about an update on Laura Bible and Ashley Freeman. Talked about when the next update episode is going to be happening. Talked about how transcribers are going to be receiving their books. Going to be working on the newsletter. Uh, I talked about a lot of stuff regarding Tom Brown's case, being in Amarillo, being in Canadian. I took all the birthday wishes from all of you. And then I finally talked about uh, Tammy McKittrick, uh, which will be this Friday's uh, episode. But that's all I have for you tonight. Went uh, an hour and about 15 minutes because I started about three minutes early. And I thank you all for tuning in tonight. It means so much to me. It uh, means so much to the guests. And um, you will be hearing me interview Moran on Friday. And, of course, Sunday night will be the Think Tank. And once again, if you'd like to be a, a part of it, just sign up on Patreon. But that's all I got for tonight. And I can't believe it's been a week since uh, I did the live show in Amarillo. That's crazy. That has to be the fastest week in my life. It's just crazy. But it's great to see all of you uh, tonight. Thank you for all the comments and, and making time for the live show tonight. Good night, everyone. Thank you so much. And um, I'm going to try to have a great birthday tomorrow. See ya.